Greetings and welcome students. We are doing our prep for term 1 of CBSE class 12th English exam that's approaching and uh, we did the last lesson M MCQs in the last class. Today we are taking up another topic from literature and as I have specified in my last lecture, your weightage for literature MCQs in the exam in your term 1 exam for CBSE this year would be 18 marks in total out of which you have 11 mark questions from uh, total questions of 11 marks MCQs all of them would be MCQs from Flamingo. So the among the topics that are there from Flamingo another topic is Lost Spring it's a story that you have already done with me for your for, for in your CBSE time saver course. So if you have not yet listened to that lecture, please listen to that first because you can't be jumping to questions directly if you have not read the text properly. So go to the lecture, take your NCERT book, like sit down with your book, listen to the lecture, take down notes. Once you are done with your prep of the entire story, then you think of the MCQs, probable questions, uh, the, chances, the chances of any question that is you know, important. Uh, if you see the range of questions that are available on the web, there are many MCQs available related to the chapter. Most of the questions that are given, as I said in the last class also, are common questions, which most of you would be able to easily attempt if you have read the story. The preparation that we are doing is not for the common, common questions. Of course, we are preparing for common questions also, but questions that are based on interpretation, questions that are based on uh, your basic contextual understanding of what is written. So if you don't contextually understand what's written in your story, there's a good chance that you'll not be able to attempt the questions correctly in the exam. So pay attention to the story and after your entire prep, then you come to MCQs and then see each and every paragraph of the story as a paragraph that's given to you in the exam and what can be the probable MCQs uh, asked of you. So think in terms of MCQs for the term one exam. You don't have to think in terms of long answer type questions. You either score full marks in an MCQ or you lose full marks in the uh, MCQ. Like even if it is two marks, one mark, half mark, you are going to lose that mark if you don't attempt the question correctly. So you don't have the chance of like rambling, which you are quite used to doing. So there's no scope of rambling, which means you'll have to know the details very correctly. Like you'll have to remember details. Memor and I won't say memorize because memorize is such a bad thing to say for uh, anything. You remember things because you understood them. You don't understand things because you memorize them. Memory is, a sh you know, it's, it's something that helps you obviously in uh, grasping things and remembering things. Re retention is very good. But if your only objective of looking at any chapter, any story is to just memorize details, that's not a very good approach. You will not be able to, if you are just memorizing things and uh, indulging in rote learning, there is a good chance that you will not be able to attempt a question which is not common. If they ask, ask you a question which is based purely on interpretation, where you have to reach your own hypothesis related to the question, then you will not be able to attempt that question because you never understood it. You just memorized the details. So make sure you are prepared for either kind of questions, like for questions that are common, questions that require a certain level of high understanding. And all of it, all of the stories that are there in your syllabus are quite easy. So even if you are being given an extract, it's easy for you to just read it, think of it in terms of the story and attempt the questions. If they have asked MCQs directly, then also it's very easy. So let's take a look at some of the questions from Lost Spring. I hope you remember the story. Uh, Lost Spring is a story of children, poor children. And uh, this is these are extracts taken from uh, Anis Jung's work and these stories talk about children who are living 
in abject poverty and they have to face lives of struggle and they have aspirations but they are not able to fulfill them because of the curse of poverty. So if you remember the story, you will be able to attempt most of the questions very easily. What excuse do the rag pickers give for not wearing chappals? Who were the rag pickers? The rag pickers are people in the first part of the story by Anis Jung. And uh, this, this person in the story, Sahib Alam, and his gang of people, Anis Jung, the author of the story, is in close contact with them. She is constantly talking to those children. And the rag pickers are constantly giving excuses for not wearing chappas, not wearing footwear. So, what excuse do the rag pickers give? Their mothers don't buy them slippers. They have no interest in wearing slippers. They want Nike only or Puma only as slippers or all of the above. What's the, what's the answer to this question? Or is there a problem with the question? Do you think there is a problem with the question? The question is asking what excuse do the rag pickers give for not wearing chappas? They say they have no interest. They say their mothers don't buy them. They want Nike only or all of the above. What's the most probable out of all of these things? I think both A and B are quite correct. The option C looks weird. I have changed option C deliberately to make it slightly confusing. But option C should be something else and the answer should be all of the above. What can be option C here? Their mothers, like one of them said, my, you know, his, they don't, they have no interest. Mothers don't buy. These were the excuses being used by children. So it could have been like, they have something like a tradition to not wear slippers or like one of them even said that they th throw them off even if their mother got them they just throw them off so it could be that thing or a tradition or no interest or their mothers don't buy them slippers so I, that point C is my, my doing. I wrote they want Nike slippers only, but it's not like they are looking for Nike slippers. That's not their excuse. Of course, they don't have slippers. They're so poor, they're never able to afford slippers for themselves. But they keep making a lot of excuses in the, like when Anis Jung, the writer, is talking to the children, the poor rack pickers, they keep making excuses. They are embarrassed, they are poor, they don't know why, some of them don't even know why they don't have slippers because they never got slippers in their lives. What compels, what forces the workers in Bengal industry of Firozabad, uh, you know, to stay in poverty? So, what, what is compelling the people, the Bengal industry people to stay in poverty? Is it their caste and ancestral profession yes the people in Firozabad the bangle maker industry that the author is talking about the second story Mukesh's story it is of course their lineage which is uh, forcing them to stay in that profession as we discussed in the story uh, their lineage pay, plays a huge role there a lot of people believe that because we are born into this caste we have to because we are bangle makers by caste so we will have to do this uh, it is the Karam theory. What is the Karam theory? Like Mukesh's grandmother said that it is his Karam, it is his destiny. Yes, that's, this Karam theory is also highly responsible for the state that these poor Bengal makers live in. They stay in a state of complete poverty and they are not able to get out of that system, get out of that uh, corrupt system that constantly exploits them. They, despite their poverty, despite them knowing that this is harmful for them, because there is a karam theory at work. All of them believe in the caste and karam. Then there are bureaucrats and politicians. Of course, there are, the system is also corrupt around them. So nobody is trying to take them out of the system. In fact, the system wants them to stay like that. So option C is also correct. Option D is all of the above. That means what compels the workers to stay in poverty? All of the reasons. A, B, C, 
all of the options are correct so it would be d would be the answer to this what is the city of Firozabad famous for? It is famous for casteism, for rag pickers. Rag pickers is from story one in the book. So don't, don't think that uh, she's talking about Firozabad and rag pickers together. Is it famous for casteism? Is it famous for rag pickers? It is famous for poverty. Is it famous for bankers? Firozabad is famous for its glass blowing industry where a lot of bangles are made for all the women in the land, it seems. So remember that. How is Mukesh's attitude different from that of his family? Mukesh is the bangle maker child in the second story. And how is his attitude different from other people in his family? All of the people in his family have accepted their karma. That this is our destiny. This is what we have to do. We have to continue making bangles and, be, and devote our lives to it. But Mukesh is different. He wants to be a motor mechanic. So in what way is he different from his family? He is daring, firm and clear. He is a fighter, being a coward, not clear. He is daring, firm and clear. He is somebody who has uh, the you know, desire to do something different. He has the gumption to do something different. He really has it in himself. To, you know, he has the clarity also. He knows exactly what he wants to do at such a young age also. One wonders if he has achieved what many have failed to achieve in their lifetime. He has a roof over his head. These lines were said in reference to the condition of, say these are the lines given to you in the exam. And these are the lines from the story Lost Spring. Okay. You know it right now because I have told you that this is from Lost Spring. I have already told you we are doing questions from Lost Spring. But in the exam, there's nobody to tell you that this is from lost. These lines are from lost spring. You have to know the lines yourself. If you look at a piece of text, you should know where it is from in your text. And mind it in for your term one syllabus. There aren't many topics from literature that you can't be thorough with. It, it's not like you're going to get hundreds of topics in your exam and you can't remember the lines. You can remember it because you can revise the chapters good enough number of times that you don't forget things. One wonders if he has achieved what many have failed in their lifetime. The writer is saying this about a person. He has a roof over his head. This person has been able to build a house. These lines were said in reference to the condition of the elderly woman's old husband, Mukesh's father, the bangle factory owner, Mukesh's elder brother. Who was this line spoken for? Who was this thing spoken for? The writer is saying this for the elderly woman's old husband. If you don't remember it, please go through that particular part of the story. You would be able to understand what I am saying. Uh, Savita, Savita's grandmother. Remember anything? Any bells are ringing? If they are not ringing, please go to that part of the story and read it again. That the writer is saying that this person is... Uh, has been able to achieve a lot what other bangle makers are not able to achieve. What are the other bangle makers usually failing at achieving? They are not able to provide a, a house, a roof over their heads. They don't have it. But this particular bangle maker, the elderly woman's old husband has been able to build a house for themselves. So it is a huge achievement for a bangle maker. It may be a small thing. That person may be thinking that he's not achieved a lot. But he has really achieved a lot of things because there are other bangle makers in the story who have not been able to achieve that in their lifetime. Sunny gold, paddy green, royal blue, pink, purple, every color born out of the seven colors of the rainbow. What is this reference to? Uh, remember, <laughs> this, this, all of these colors are uh, mentioned in relation to the bangles that are being sold, not the clothes, birds and bindis. So because Firozabad is extremely famous and when the writer Anish Jung is describing it, when she is describing the situation in the city, the bangle industry, she says that every color born out of the seven colors of the rainbow, every color of the bangles is available here. But the situation is still like it's a city which is so colorful symbolically also 
but uh, you see how sad the people who you know people who are working in the industry who are making these bangles so it is she's speaking about the bangles here what was the profession of mukesh's father before he became a bangle maker what was uh, mukesh's father's profession see even though mukesh and his father they have been born into the caste of bangle makers but mukesh's father also tried doing something else it's mentioned in the story the, he he start he when he when he was younger he tried being a tailor so option number a option a is the correct answer he did not try to become a carpenter plumber or mason he tried his hand at tailoring but he failed and then he got back to bangle making name the author of the story lost spring i am mentioning the name again and again so you already know the name of the author but you see how how tricky these people how clever these people some how tricky the question is and how clever these people are that all of the other options are uh, names of authors of other stories in flamingo so for instance william douglas is the author of deep water kamala das is the poet who has written my mother at 66 alphonse dodet the last lesson anis jung lost spring so if you don't remember anis jung very well then it can be quite confusing as a question for you because all of the other are uh, others are also known names you have read them when you were preparing for the stories author of lost spring anis jung was born in what place in the introduction to the story when you start a story usually there is an introductory note about the author of the story so there is an introductory note in your ncert textbook about anis jung also where was she born in <laughs> like where was she born she was born in the united states of america she was educated in the united states of america was she born in raurkela hyderabad new delhi she was born in raurkela uh you can if you have not remember if you have not read that section very well you can be quite confused because then you would see say you know you would think that maybe she was born in new delhi which is why she is talking to people who are living in simapuri but the exact answer is raurkela the narrative in lost spring is an excerpt from i told you that these stories saheb e alam story and mukesh story in your syllabus they are excerpts they are parts of a larger book a, a book by anis jung what is the name of that book i like the question what's the what's the answer to this is it last chance stories of stolen childhood is it lost childhood memories of two boys is it lost spring stories of stolen childhood or last lesson freedom from exploitation <laughs> i like the last name but the answer is c lost spring stories of stolen childhood quite easy to remember if you have read the story the author speaks about what in lost spring what is it that the author is speaking about in lost spring is she talking about fear of children is she talking about seema puri in firozabad is she talking about exploitation of poor children is she talking about all of the factors yes she is talking about everything she talks about the fears that children experience she is talking about seema puri and firozabad as places what's happening in those places she is talking about exploitation of poor children by because of various reasons poverty being the chief reason so she is talking about all of these uh, things in the stories of stolen childhood the adults of seema puri viewed garbage as a means of remember this line from the text for children the garbage is wrapped in wonder but for adults for the parents for other adults it is just a means of what's the answer is it a mean do adults see garbage as entertainment in seema puri or do they see joy do they see it as joy or sorrow they see it as survival for them it is just a means of survival so d is the answer the children of seema puri viewed garbage as a means of i told you already in the last question i've already <laughs> told you what the answer to the next would be so what do the children see garbage as they see garbage as a means of entertainment no foolishness play 
a wonder garbage means a wonderful thing to them they are always wonder struck at the number of things they find in garbage they it it is what drives their uh, curiosity so the p small children who are rag picking they see it wrapped in wonder also but for their parents it is just a means of survival uh you can be asked questions like this where you are being given an extract and you are asked mcqs based on that extract it takes now i have picked see these extracts i have picked myself from the entire story and i'm not written down any questions but think of the probable questions i'm just training you uh, on how to prepare for mcqs once you have listened to my lecture or however you have chosen to prepare for the story it's not only listening to my lecture if you have read the story completely have attempted the ncert questions and other questions and now you are all set to prepare for your term 1 of cbsc exam and uh, you think you need mcq prep after understanding everything what would you do because you don't have a large question bank where you have all the questions available this is a new pattern of course so what would you do you would take a look at each and every paragraph that's there in your story or every stanza of your poetry section and you would think of the probable questions you would think of contextual questions interpretation based question think of word meaning related questions think think of the questions whenever you're looking at any extract from the syllabus so the extract here is it takes longer to build a school i say embarrassed at having made a promise that was not meant but promises like mine abound in every corner of his bleak world can you think of some questions from this extract i can think of some questions of course you can't speak to me right now but i'm sure there are questions in your mind as well it takes longer to build a school who's saying this like if they have asked you with four choices who's speaking this the writer anish jung she's saying that it is it is it takes longer to build a school why is the writer embarrassed that can be one of the questions so if they have given you options but what would be the correct answer the correct answer is she was embarrassed because she made a promise that she did not mean completely but promises like mine abound in every corner of his bleak world say they ask you what is the meaning of the world uh, the, of the word bleak here bleak means unhappy world something which is dull unhappy so it can be a word meaning related question it can be a contextual question related to how what what is being said in what context it's being said so interpretation is important if you remember it you will be able to attempt questions from questions from this particular section let's take a look at another extract even if she did he will throw them off adds another who is wearing shoes that do not match when i comment on it he shuffles his feet and say says nothing i want shoes says a third boy who has never owned a pair all his life they can ask you something like who is i here who is i anish jung the author is the i here she is the one who is talking what is being spoken about what's the matter here what's the discussion she is asking them why are you not wearing chappals why are you not wearing shoes who is she speaking with who where are these children they are rag pickers from seema puri so they can ask you when they give you a four line extract like this they can ask you any question which can be about that particular extract or around that particular extract they don't have to ask you direct questions all the time from the extract itself the extract is mentioned just as a just to give you a small context they you, you could be asked something that happened before this or after this or some interpretation related questions so be prepared for all sorts of possibilities like they can they could have asked you why are the children not wearing chappals some something like that right why is the boy wearing shoes that do not match how do you interpret that then they would give you options and you'd pick one 
the goddess has granted his prayer young boy is like the son of the priest now wore shoes but many uh, many others like the rag pickers in my neighborhood remain shoeless so this these lines are being spoken after something else the writer says in the story what was it she was talking about the man from udipi who was a priest son and uh, he never had shoes he had made a prayer to the goddess to uh, grant him to give him a pair of shoes now the condition of the priests who live in udipi or across the country it has improved now the priest sons can uh, priest children can afford shoes for themselves they can wear good uniform and go to school they have facilities his prayer has been granted but the prayer has not been granted for all sections of the society there are still rag pickers in simapuri who, whose children do not have shoes so if you don't remember this entire discussion that is there in the story it will be very difficult to just look at these lines and answer the questions because they will be asking questions around the extract they will not be asking you just direct questions okay so it can get slightly more complex than you expect it to be so they they could have asked you an mcq here uh, the goddess had granted his prayer whose prayer has been granted uh, that man from odp who was the priest son young boy is like the son of the priest now wore shoes where is the young boy where is this young son of the priest now what place is it or what but many others like the rag pickers in my neighborhood remain shoeless why are the neighbor no, rag pickers in simapuri shoeless so these are the questions think look at a paragraph and think of questions and you are prepared for the exam quite simple let us take at a look take a look at another extract here my acquaintance with the barefoot rag pickers leads me to simapuri a place on the periphery on the border of delhi yet miles away from it metaphorically what do you mean by metaphorically for instance if they ask you this question you should know the meaning of what it means like she means symbolically even though simapuri as a place is just on the border of the capital of india which is known as the you know as a center of growth and development but a place on its periphery on its uh, border is so away from development so geographical closeness to a place of development does not ensure growth and development for a place which is on the periphery so even though it's very close to delhi met you know it is miles away symbolically it is miles away in terms of growth and development so they could have asked you a question on the word metaphorically you see what what i'm trying to tell you here i'm trying to tell you that if you don't understand each and everything that's there in the lines of your chapter you will face a problem in attempting mcq so understand everything and it's quite easy to understand each and every line each and every word you don't have a lot of syllabus to prepare for term 1 so just relax and go through everything revise read again discuss it with friends look at the lectures try to listen to the lectures carefully and take down notes so you would then you would not be stuck at explaining things like what is metaphorically those who live here are squatters what do you mean by the word squatters say they asked you what do you mean by the word squatters squatters means illegal immigrants people who are living illegally who are the squatters here the rag pickers are the squatters here who came from ba bangladesh in back in 1971 why did they now they could have they could give ask you a question why did they come from bangladesh in 1971 so they will give you four options here and you have to answer the question so you should know why did these people immigrated why did these people immigrate Sahib's family is among them. Sima Puri was then a wilderness. What do you mean by the word wilderness or wilderness? Wilderness is uh, it was not a cultivated land. Is it cultivated now? No, it's still not cultivated. But at least it is occupied. Earlier it was a completely desolate place. It was a completely isolated place, isolated place, uh, uncared for. Now people who are illegal immigrants are at least living there. It is still not cultivated.
you can make some MCQs for yourself and test yourself on each and every paragraph. I, of course, we are not doing each and every paragraph. I'm just trying to tell you the kind of questions that can be asked. My idea here is to explain to you what are the possibilities of the questions? What kind of possibilities are there in terms of questions? So it could be word related, interpretation related, symbolic, uh, symbolic meaning, all of these things you should know when you are, you know, when you are preparing for the exam. It still is, but it is no longer empty. What is no longer empty? It still is, it is still a wilderness, but it is no longer empty. Simapuri is still a wilderness, but it is no longer empty. It is still uncultivated, but it is occupied by people. In structures of mud with roofs of tin and tarpaulin, what's the meaning of the word tarpaulin? It's a waterproof cloth. Devoid of sewage, drainage or running water, live 10,000 rat pickers. They have lived here for more than 30 years without an identity, without permits, but with ration cards that get their names on voters list and enable them to buy grain. So they can ask you some context related question here. How do people in Simapuri have voters ID? Why are their names on voters list? They are illegal immigrants. Then they will give you four options. You have to pick an option. What's the right answer? Because the system is corrupt, because the politicians use them as vote banks, their uh, voters IDs are made, voter, voter IDs are made uh, illegally, okay. And they could have asked you another question contextually, why do they agree to something like this, to this kind of a corrupt arrangement, because they, they also need ration cards. How do they get empowered using the ration cards, because ration cards in India give them access to cheaper grain. So they need the ration cards. They don't bother about an identity. Their identity is all fake. It is not, it is a, you know, it's a, it's a, it's an identity which is just, you know, made up by the politicians of the area who want to use them as vote banks. But in reality, these people don't have any identity. But then are they bothered about the identity? They are not bothered about the identity because they want cheap grains. So they don't really care uh, whether they have a real identity or not. Till the time the politicians make it available to them, make the grains available to them, make it easy for them to get grains through their ration cards, they are okay with their names being on the voters list. Uh, they can ask you a question like food is more important for survival than an identity what is meant here and they can give you four options is food not healthy uh, are they you know these people are crazy about food <laughs> or they can they can give you the right answer that food is what helps them survive while identity is something which is like a luxury to the people who are illegal immigrants so they will always see, remember this thing, they will always give you the right answer in the <laughs> options. You have to be smart enough to pick the right answer. Through the years, it has acquired the proportions of a fine art. Now they have randomly given these lines to you and suppose the question MCQ that's given to you asks you, I'm just saying the question, think of the answer. It has acquired the proportions of a fine art, the line says. What has acquired the proportions of a fine art? It is being said in relation to the rag pickers. The business of rag picking, it has acquired the proportions of a fine art. This is a direct question. They can mention rag picking in the options. But what if they asked you, how is rag picking how is rag picking now a fine art if you remember the explanation i had given you from the lectures you would know that it has become a fine art means it has become a you know they have been doing rag picking for so long these people have been doing rag picking for so long that it has become a professional art for them it's like a practiced art it's like an art in which they invested their time and energy and they've upskilled themselves in it. So it has become almost like a fine art. They have practiced it. So you should know the meaning also. Otherwise you will not be able to answer. 
garbage to them is gold they can ask you the meaning of this line it means it is the only means of survival to them it means livelihood to them which is why it is being compared to gold it is their daily bread a roof over their heads even if it is a leaking room but for leaking roof but for a child it is more i sometimes find a rupee even a 10 rupee note sahib says his eyes lighting up when you can find a silver coin in a heap of garbage you don't stop scrounging there is hope of finding more so they can ask you a question what why are children so excited rag picking because for children it is just not just a means of survival it means it it drives their curiosity as i said a while ago so just basic understanding based question can a god given lineage ever be broken she implies born in the caste of bangle makers they have seen nothing but bangles in the house in the yard in every other house every other yard every street in firozabad another excerpt from the story but this is from mukesh's story from the bangle maker story who is speaking here like if they ask you in an mcq as an mcq they ask you what is the god given lineage what's the god given lineage here the tradition of making bangles who is the speaker of these lines of the first line of the excerpt can a god given lineage ever be broken it is mukesh's grandmother who is saying this who has seen nothing but bangles the bangle uh, industry workers of firozabad so basic questions but some complex questions as well alongside the trick is to remember where this, these lines are coming from if you can remember that then you can attempt most of the questions easily and in dark hutments next to lines of flames of flickering oil lamps sit boys and girls with their fathers and mothers welding pieces of colored glass into circles of bangles their eyes are more adjusted to the dark than to the light outside now the question can be why are their eyes adjusted to the dark than to the light outside because they work in dark furnaces they work in circumstances in which they are completely looking uh, minutely at glass and they are in a dark environment so their eyes get adjusted to the dark than to the light outside which is why they lose their eyesight by the time they turn adults and uh, what town are we speaking about here it's firozabad what's the profession uh, who are these children basic questions think of all of the questions when you look at the paragraph it will dawn on her suddenly one day when her head is draped red with a veil uh, uh, with a red veil her hands dyed red with henna and red bangles are rolled onto her wrist she'll then become a bride like the old woman beside her who became one many years ago she still has bangles on her wrist but no light in her eyes who are we talking about here savita remember the little girl who was making bangles with the grandmother and what do you mean by she still has bangles on her wrist who are we talking about her grandmother she still has bangles on her wrist but there is no light in her eyes she has lost her eyesight it can also mean she has lost all joy in life she has turned old but mostly it means that she has lost her eyesight and she, her eyes have weakened because of the bangle industry work and uh, what is savita not realizing right now remember what what is the writer saying about savita in the story she says that savita the little girl whose hands work like a machine she uh, this girl has uh, you know she she does not know the importance of bangles in indian culture what do bangles symbolize it they mean suhag they mean uh, they mean your marital bliss they symbolize your marital bliss so it is the you know uh, married people wear glass bangles so savita does not know they can ask you who is the girl they can give you savita as an option they can ask you uh, what is what is she not realizing right now she is too small to realize the importance of bangles when will she realize it when she gets married who's who's the woman sitting with her the grandmother why is the grandmother uh, you know why why is she what what is meant by there is no light in her eyes so these questions can be asked 
he is suddenly silent no he says staring at the ground in a small murmur there is an embarrassment that has not yet turned into a regret he is content to he is content to dream of cars that he sees hurtling down the streets of his town few play, airplanes fly over firozabad what can be the questions here who is suddenly silent remember these lines from the text mukesh right mukesh who wants to be a motor mechanic but is a bangle maker the writer is talking to him and they can ask you who is he here who is suddenly silent it is mukesh why is he suddenly silent he is suddenly silent because he is embarrassed why is he embarrassed because the writer has asked him a question what is the question asked that uh, does he also dream of flying planes but he has never thought of planes why has he never thought of planes because he has never seen enough number of planes <laughs> few airplanes fly over firozabad it is a symbolically said sentence also uh, because uh, even though firozabad is a large bangle making you know place and even though mukesh is being viewed as somebody who has dreamt very big he wants to be a motor mechanic he wants to change his god given lineage but still his dreams are quite small he is not thinking he does not have the exposure or education and the push in the world to dream of larger things or bigger things he is not thinking of um, flying a plane ever he is just thinking of driving a car he wants to be a motor mechanic he has only seen uh, big cars of rich people in the city hasn't ever seen many planes so his aspirations are also very small so they can ask you context based mcq here few airplanes fly over firozabad what is meant by this sentence uh if you go to my lecture you will understand what is meant here more in in more detail i think we are done here yeah so we have what we have done today is exactly what we did in the last class as well for the last lesson where we were discussing its mcqs looking at some general questions and looking at some excerpts which can be converted into mcqs so it's quite easy just keep reading keep revising and keep taking down notes and if you take interest in the stories and the poetry you will yourself remember the details very easily you don't have to make a concerted effort at remembering anything uh, so i'll see you in the next class with questions from another story until then please take care of yourselves and stay safe stay inside take care bye